What is masculinity? How do you define a man and manliness? Today, we are going to learn what makes a man. Now, you may be wondering, how do we have a class on masculinity? You'd be surprised what I can teach you. So be sure to smash that subscribe button. If you're ready to be schooled, and don't forget to hit the notification bell so you never miss another Dad's Class. Before we get too far into this topic, guys, the description of this video is going to have a bunch of links to some interesting things I came across while I was looking for information to really build this episode. So be sure to check out the links in the description below. So how we determine what is a man or manliness or the essence of masculinity can be determined from several different aspects and those things might vary depending on where you were raised or how you were raised. Aspects such as the physical characteristics or how an individual expresses or moderates themselves emotionally. And of course there are some social aspects and how society looks at men that changes what masculinity is. For the purpose of this video I've decided I'm gonna start with the physical aspects of a man. Now that's a pretty broad generalized term and can include many different things. What's also interesting to me is how society has influenced what we consider to be a man and how those things have changed and evolved over time. To get a grasp of what I mean by that, simply look at movies from different eras and you can see the differences in how men are presented. Things like body hair, body type, or facial hair, or lack of any hair are some of the features that people consider physical. I don't know about you guys, but when I've seen or heard people discussing men, the two physical characteristics that really stand out to me are their height, as well as you know, whether or not they're physically fit. And due to these priorities by society, it seems that some men, when they feel they are not up to par on the height level, tend to be more into the physical fitness aspect of life as though they can somehow make up for their lack of height by having a more perfect body. This idea, however, of masculinity being something that can be accumulated doesn't just end there. Some men, because they can't physically become more fit, will focus on things like growing a nice manly beard and maintaining that instead of their physical appearance. It's as though each man has a bucket and that with these buckets, somehow we must fill them with the qualities of masculinity that we have come to accept so that they can earn their status of a man with their full man bucket. To set the record straight, I personally grow a beard after 10 years of working in an industry that required me to be clean shaven every day and not having the option to grow it out. Well, now that I'm not in that industry, darn tootin', I'm letting it roll. However, also for how beautiful this beard comes in, who wouldn't want to grow one? Quite possibly one of the more interesting aspects about these important physical characteristics is the open debate that seems to be going on with them. Things like hashtag dad bod or hashtag gym bod or gym life. And it's almost as though there's a competition between the two ends of the same spectrum. With social media posts and memes of galore talking about these different topics and the two ends of this spectrum. Even ideas as to whether a man should have a nice burly beard or something more streamlined and well-groomed. Interestingly, much like the physical body debate, there's also some debate about what type of beard other people find more attractive. If I'm going to be honest with you guys, these things that we've been talking about, the physical characteristics of manliness, are actually the least important. That being said, it is the foundation of that totem pole. So the stronger that it is, the more confident and comfortable you are with your physical appearance, what you portray to the outside world. The better capable you are to build on that to improve your manliness image for the world. At the end of the day, guys, what really matters is whether or not you yourself are comfortable in your physical image. If you're limited, like I used to be, about whether or not you can grow your facial hair, it's not really much you can do about that. But there are other ways to modify your physical appearance, such as with your hair growth or your physical fitness level, to make you more comfortable. And at the end of the day, as long as
long as you feel like you look like the man you want to look like, that's all that really matters. The next thing that we're going to talk about here is the emotional side of being a man. And the difficulty with this is, much like in how our physical appearance has changed under what we consider to be manly, we've also grown as a society and expanded upon what we expect from our men emotionally. Regardless of the positive or negative emotions that are associated with being human, it has always been focused upon for men to be characters of strong emotional competence. What I mean by that is that men are meant to be, well, stoic. Throughout history, we've been shown to be of few words and of very little emotional communication. And this trend is shifting outwards and we are seeing more and more embracement of men being part of their humanity. And that is a really great thing. There are some characteristics of the mental capacity which go beyond the emotions, however. To be stoic is to be confident enough in your presence in the room to not have to explain yourself verbally. It is also common that people who are described this way tend not to show a wide variety of emotions, with Hollywood often showing men as either hound dogs or angry warrior types, and not much of anything in between. There are some personality characteristics that also go with this. To be considered a man, there is a lot put on you to be polite and to be cordial, opening doors, taking the hand of the woman, and a few other little nitpicky things that have come and gone throughout society's evolution of the role men play in the lives of the people around them. Now, an actor by the name of Justin Baldoni? Probably saying that wrong. But you might know him from the show Jane the Virgin. That's how I know him anyways as an actor. Has a TED Talk. And in the description of said TED Talk, it says how he wants to start a dialogue with men about re defining masculinity. Find ways not to just be good men, but to be good humans. In his TED Talk, which I'll put a link to in the description because it's actually really cool, he brings up a challenge for men. Now, it's not your typical challenge, and that's kind of what I like about it. In that challenge, he kind of puts things on their heads, challenging masculinity by using masculine concepts. He challenges men to see if they can use the qualities they hold so dear to go deeper, and fortifies this by asking people, are you brave enough to be vulnerable? Are you strong enough to be sensitive? And are you confident enough to listen to the women in your life? Now, I had originally intended on mentioning that TED Talk at the end of this video. However, I felt that it really brought to head the emotional aspects of men, the bravery, the confidence, and their strength to be strong emotionally, to be the rocks, the centers of their family units or their friend circles, to be the foundation on which everything else comes from. And then also asks if those simple concepts are enough. Much like Justin mentions at the beginning of his TED Talk, I too grew up in a untraditionalistic male role model situation. My father also was not like a sports and guns and manly man type thing going on ever. And so for me, this idea that masculinity has to be turned on its head, I understand quite well what Justin is talking about. Just ask yourselves, can you truly believe that a human who does not experience the full range of their emotional capacity can truly understand other human beings? The other curiosity about lacking men's emotional understanding by permitting them or not permitting them to experience a full range of emotions begs the question whether or not men can truly love other people. How can you, as a person in a relationship with a man, truly know that they love you when society hasn't let them love themselves? From the emotional side of things, we can then take a look into behavioral characteristics. I kind of touched on this a little bit earlier when I mentioned the more gentlemanly behaviors such as being cordial and opening doors for women and, you know, shaking a man's hand with firm grip and looking them in the eye. Just a couple of activities or behaviors that are kind of expected of mature men. Another one of them is appropriate attire. And this varies for situation and situation. And you really should dress 
for your situation. What I mean by that is that if you are in a casual situation, you can dress casually. However, if you're attending a more formal event, then, well, you should be dressing for the occasion. Whether intentionally or not, I kind of always got the impression and understanding for my reason that you could be one of two men in a room and you shouldn't be anything else. The smartest or the best dressed. If you can be both, well, that's an added bonus. Have you ever heard that idea where when you're going for an interview, you should be dressed for the position higher than the one you're applying for? That's kind of how you should look at life realistically. If you are intending to make good first impressions on people, the more well put together your physical appearance by your attire just kind of helps gift wrap the whole package, doesn't it? And some other aspects or qualities that men have been known to have is the carrying of cash or footing the bill. And there's actually quite a few articles right now about how more men need to start carrying their money on them, physical cash, and ditch the cards for a variety of reasons. As a reminder to myself, I'm going to tell myself to put a link in the description to one of those articles so you guys can check it out after. Of course, as with everything, the ideas and concept of masculine behaviors and emotions also are changing as time goes on. One characteristic that is becoming more prevalent in today's society to accentuate what a good man is, is how good of a parent he is. Say hi everybody. The ways in which a man interacts with his children and how well he takes care of them is becoming a bigger priority as a general whole for the characteristics of what makes a man manly. Well, once they're a father anyways. In fact, one of the main things that led me to be in the current relationship I am in is because of my interactions with the children I already had. My current spouse rather enjoys telling people that the only reason she started hanging out with me is because she liked my mustache, and what kept her around was seeing me as a dad. Well, it is all in good to be a stoic man who can hold his presence in a room and, you know, all that other stuff. That's great, and by all means, accentuate those parts of your personality if that's how you want to portray yourself. If nothing else that you guys take from this, I hope this video helps you understand that we can't just define a man under any one description. All aspects of the spectrum of being human are still characteristics of being a man. We've mentioned throughout the video the different social aspects and how society has influenced the physical and the emotional or how society is changing to adapt to changes in those aspects of masculinity. As human beings, we are social creatures, so it makes perfect sense that all of the things that we define ourselves as are influenced by society. Also, by the way, guys, um, I do a podcast and live on a platform called Mixer, and we kind of touched on some of this subject over there. I'll put links in the description. You guys want to go check it out live, but there's also a playlist here on YouTube of some edited down versions. In the How To Dad podcast, we had a recent episode where we talked about the stigmas around jobs. And it was brought up how people didn't find my choices of employment to be man enough to provide for my family like a man should. So I invite you to go check that out as well. However, let's continue on. Whether it's TVs, movies, comic books, magazines, social media, or your friends and family that surround you, even just your community, or perhaps your religion. We are shaped by the different experiences that we have, and that includes our ideas of who we are as men. And quite possibly, the biggest downside to that is society. What we permit to be socially acceptable for men, although growing and changing, is often still limited. The best part about being an adult male isn't actually being a man and showing how manly you are. It's not about the bravado. And anyone who thinks it is, is setting a poor example for men. We, as men, are social role models, whether that is for our own children or for the society at large. I experience this on almost a daily basis, being a parent who has the joy of having an employment that allows me to be home during the more active hours of my family. For the record, I work from 3 o'clock in the morning to 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and that's four days a week. Well... Also still doing a couple of odds and ends bus routes for the school division here in town. 
but I'm home after school and until my kids go to bed and have a keen amount of time to really interact with my children. And I know I have to improve, but it allows me to adapt and be better and see in myself ways to improve as a role model, not only for my sons, but also for my daughters. And that truly is what it means to be a man, is to be the role model for how society should be shaped. Regardless of how we look, and sometimes even how we act, as long as we are doing the best we can to set a better example, to permit our children to be better men and better humans than what we were, that's, that sounds pretty good to me. Let me know in the comments, guys, if this is a topic you'd like me to hit up on the How To Dad podcast and maybe dig a little deeper and get some involvement from the chat. Otherwise, I hope you guys learned something from this class. And if not, well, you can give it a thumbs down. I'm okay with that. You won't hurt my feelings. Over here, there's a couple other videos I think you should go and check out. Can I put you down now? Or are you going to keep praying? You're covered in drool. You want it on me. Can I put you down now?